Hello gang, thanks for joining me today. I'm just going to give you the trip report for April. So starting off with my day, getting there actually was like 10.50 that night when I landed on a Monday. So basically I was there uh, by myself uh, waiting for the HCS uh, crew to arrive. So anyway, they were coming in on a Wednesday. So I was by myself, uh, staying at the Nugget. Um, I like those tables there. There's no plexiglass, um, not much bounce to the tables. Of course, uh, I was by myself, and when I did get down to the tables, I was surprised myself that I was throwing uh, pretty decent. I had a bunch of uh, like 12 to 15 rolls. I had 20-something rolls the following day, and also a 30-plus roll. So I did pretty well. I was up um, pretty decent in money. I uh, should have been higher up, but since it was my first day, tried to uh, pace myself. So maybe I was up about 700 or so. Then I went to uh, also shoot at the uh, Fremont Hotel. <clears throat> I like the tables there too. They're not very bouncy, but they do have plexiglass. And uh, I did throw a 31 roller and got myself a Fremont hat. Okay, so that was pretty decent for me. And then that was on a Tuesday, I guess, because I got there late Monday night. So most of my shooting was on the Tuesday. Then waiting for Brian guys to come in and his uh, crew. They came in Wednesday late. Mar came in a little bit earlier and had opportunities to throw with Mar. And also Fuji from uh, Arizona drove in and we played together. So we did pretty well. Still was making some money, but I wanted the crew from Brian guys to get here because they all throw pretty decent and it's nothing better than having, you know, your crew with you and so you know how everyone throws. The only problem is because of the COVID, a lot of times only one table is open and, you know, like at the Nugget, they'll allow eight people there. But unless there's plexiglass, you, you're only going to have three per side. So anyway, um, Brian and his crew came in Wednesday night and uh, I got to finally meet some of those that I have, people that I've never met. Um, Brian, I know, Mar, I know, I never threw with Elmer very much, but Chef Elmer came and that was great. First time for me to meet Kari and Grant. Uh, Gary also came. Uh, he was one of my first students when I first started uh, my Dice Channel and offering some classes. So that was nice. Also, I met Hoku from uh, part of Brian's crew now, I guess. He was uh, 2018 golden arm tournament winner so that was nice to to meet him also john g was there and i want to thank john g and uh, his wife for taking us around and uh, because of him i got to finally go to ellis island and uh, sam's town which was pretty neat uh, i've never been there so again thank you very much john g and your wife so i really appreciated that so I also want to mention um, Elton. He comes from the island of Honolulu. We met a few times, um, talk a lot on the phone. This time I seen him up there, but I didn't have a chance to play with him. Uh, really nice guy, really down to earth. He goes by the name Technician. So if you have a chance, uh, you ever see him up there, go ahead and talk to him, really nice guy. So anyway, we did a lot of uh, shooting dice. I mean, I, I played at least six to eight sessions a day. Uh, that's hard to maintain that kind of um, gambling for six days. But I tried to hold my own. I was up maybe uh, till Thursday, maybe about a thousand plus thousand. And then uh, it started to taper off because of the tables not being shooting you know rolling that well and then there were more random people coming in because it was the weekend and it, it was really hard 
for uh, myself and uh, Brian's crew to get on the same table. Um, that's the problem. You, you might have one space or two spaces, but it may not be your, your uh, position that you want to throw from um, exactly like where you practice from. You know, a lot of us who uh, set dice or dice influencers, we have our spot to throw from, so there's no guarantee you're going to get that spot. And like I said, you're playing with a lot of randoms, so happen to start losing. Uh, try to maintain what we, where we were at and trying to get lucky. Uh, I hit a slot machine, which normally I don't play um, at the Cal on the Flaming Sevens, but that paid me 300 And Brian also uh, hit the slots over there, Flaming Sevens for the Progressive, which was uh, I think about 1100 and something dollars. So that helped us out a little. Again, um, it, we had a nice time. Being there six days and playing six or eight sessions a day, it's, um, it's a little rough. It gets rough, especially if you don't have the crew to shoot with or your position to where you want to play from. On the weekends, it's really busy. It seems like Vegas is open 100%. Although they're not, they're going to be open 100%, I think, May 1st. And maybe they'll allow more people around the craps tables. But basically, um, I don't think the cow opens their crap table t until 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And I was hearing that during the week, they closed down at like 10 or 11 o'clock at night for their table, table games. The Nugget is open 24-7, uh, but... It's only one table, and so unless you get down there very, very early, um, you might not get your position, or you might not even get on the table. So again, like I said, the Nugget has one table open early in the morning. Um, eight people around the table. No guarantee you're gonna get your spot, but a lot of times the best thing is early in the morning. Then around noon, they'll open another table, and that at least gives you a little bit more opportunity but the Nugget is really busy, and so no guarantee you're going to get on the table again. On the weekends, they'll open four tables. And, but, you know, on the weekends, it's super crowded. Like I said, um, you know, Vegas is almost like 100% open. So that's what the Nugget has to offer as far as tables being opened and when they're going to be opened. Um, most time, early in the morning, you find some room for, your, for yourself. Um, also, while I was there, um, when I wasn't shooting crap on the real tables, I was Skyping with Rick from uh, Let It Roll, and we were playing bubble craps. Uh, that was fun. That took care of at least part of my day where I wasn't on the table consistently. Um, other than that, my COVID test was negative. Um, I didn't win, but for six days of playing, I lost uh, $750, which to me was almost like a win. So again, I had a good time. Uh, Brian and his people had a great time. Brian will be putting out uh, some videos for you from the Fremont and from the Aliente, which is Boyd Group's um, properties, very nice properties. I'm not going to give you any details on what happened, but Brian will give you the details and make sure you stay tuned and uh, view that videos. I'm sure that you're going to like everything that is put out on the videos. Again, thank you very much. I will be posting the rest of the Orleans from our last visit and the Cal. So stay tuned for those videos. Again, I want to thank all these people, Brian's crew and Rick for, you know, keeping me company while I was there. And, uh, you know, a special mahalo to uh, Mar. I mean, she's a really big help for me when I'm there. Again, thank you very much. That's the trip report for my April. Please take care. Stay safe. And when you're on the tables, please try to stay alive.